First Corinthians, chapter eleven, chapter eleven, chapter eleven, verse twenty. Chapter eleven, verse twenty. First Corinthians, First Corinthians, twenty. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry, and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or you despise the truth of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup of the supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Amen. Because if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. Today, therefore, there is an invitation for us to judge ourselves, so we will not be judged in life by the Lord. If we judge ourselves, we discern ourselves, we will not have to be judged. Root of all evil, the love of money. In other words, if we do not discern ourselves, judge ourselves, God has decided to chasten, to judge, to condemn. And what is this judgment and condemnation? That whoever eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, keep yourself from greed. Whoever eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment on himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason... Many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Everything that we do, my brethren, has consequences in our lives. If we decide to walk under the yoke of Christ, we will have the consequences of complete blessings, of complete blessings, the assurance that we will enter richly through the gates into the kingdom of heaven and we shall obtain an eternal life in the kingdom in which God gave to us. We will, we will sorry, obtain our wage in full. But if we persist even if God reveals it to us in our mistakes in our sins, in our walk according to desires of our deceitful hearts. Things will not be good from now on. Because today I believe that God says to all of us and first to me with the best and clear way that He can. There are sins that are deadly. A deadly sin is basically one whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit cannot enter into repentance. What does that mean, a deadly sin? It means you did it, it's finished. There's no second chance. It's as if 
the person puts the mark on the period of the Antichrist. You put the mark on, there's no hope of salvation. But there is a sin which is not deadly. In other words, that you can go to the Lord, repent, return, to ask for mercy, grace, the blood of Jesus Christ, to cleanse us and cleanses us from every kind of sin. But there's also another deadly sin, which comes from the non-deadly sins, which is the sin which you do on purpose, willingly. If willingly you sin, whatever sin this might be, but with full conscience, without having any intentions to repent and to reject it, then the whatever non-deadly sin, if it is done in conscience, continually, without rebuke, without conviction, without, repert, without return, then this non-deadly sin changes into a deadly sin. That's why many sleep. And after death, there is no salvation or repentance. Today, therefore, my brethren, the Word of God exhorts us to examine ourselves and so let him meet. Today, and from now on, let's examine ourselves. What does that mean? Become ready. May your waist be girded and your lamps burning. And you, like people who are waiting for the Master to return, all of a sudden, we know the day, we know the day, but we don't know the hour. If you will come the first watch, the second watch, the third watch, or the fourth watch of the night. But the servants are obligated to wait for their Lord to return, their Master to return from the wedding, to be ready to open up to Him the house, the door, to welcome Him into His house. And those who wait in such a manner, these servants who wait in such a manner, ready, not asleep, not wearing pyjamas, not indifferent to what's going on around them, not in repeatedly sinning the same sins, not deadly, which we do become deadly in the end, these people the Lord will serve, will gird him his ways, will put them sit on by the table to stand um, beside them and serve them. Today, therefore, my beloved brethren, let's take our position before the Lord. It's not for someone or for some people the word of God, but it's for all of us without exceptions, no matter where we are hearing the Word of God from. Let every person examine himself, herself, so this person will not be judged because the law will bring judgment on some people for repentance, judgment for return, calamity for correction. Today, therefore, we all of us have a great chance. Now that we will stand up, we will stand before the Lord in fear and trembling. Today, I understand this well, working out our salvation in trembling and fear because the Lord is coming in a, in a moment that we don't know of, whether with a personal invitation or whether with the rapture of the church. Let's not be found like that foolish rich man. Let's not be found like the five foolish virgins. But let's be found ready to hear the trumpet of God and to see our bodies, these mortal bodies, put on immortality and our corruptible bodies to put on incorruption. Amen, brethren. Let's take advantage, please. As if God is pleading with us today, let's take advantage of today's day. Tomorrow does not belong to us. This moment belongs to us. 
in this moment, let's take advantage of it. Let's repent. Let's ask for God to show mercy, to forgive us. Our service, our ministry, in our ministry and in our service, for there not to be anything that defiles it, to be as God wants us to be, at least for this time, for the first time maybe, to take part in blessings and not in condemnation in the communion of the body and blood of Jesus. Let's rise now, please.